Lynch Game Review. Kane was ready to pay for all the people he's killed. He was done. He was on the way to wherever they were going to kill him, and the prison transport is knocked over. He fights to stay alive during a really dangerous rescue op, and then he finds out what's going on. The two surviving members of the oddly and lazily named mercenary group, The Seven, the two brothers, Beardo and Baldy, have his estranged wife and his daughter. And they want the loot from the last failed operation that they together was on, or they're going to kill them both. They set Kane up with a partner slash watch watchdog, the dangerous psychopath Lynch. And we follow these two men on some really, really bad days. The game is essentially Freedom Fighters 2.0. It's a tactical shooter where you can give orders to your friends and you know, your team members and you have to rely on them also to get past the various you know, to get through the various missions, you cannot get through this game all on your own without, you know, giving them orders and without using some strength in numbers. Because the enemy also has strength in numbers. You also have to keep your people alive, and they will try to keep you alive, which means that if someone gets shot, they'll be lying there starting to die and they can be given an adrenaline injection, but don't rely on these too much because you'll overdose and die. The When you are laying there dying, you get these sort of flashbacks. You hear Kane's guilty conscience haunt him. The game is quite psychological and this adds to the emotion. This really is an emotionally engaging game. You really badly want to try to save Kane's family. You really badly want to make sure that this at least goes that well. Every mission is basically an assault on some building or area, then accomplishing some obje objectives there, then getting out alive. Examples include in a bank robbery, an assault on a dance club, a jailbreak, and each time you definitely have Lynch there with you, and often you also have a team of other mercenaries. There are a couple of rail shooter levels where you are in or on a car and you have to shoot you know, the other cars or various things. Those are really cool. In general, this game is incredibly tense from start to finish. Very exciting, highly action-packed. There's constantly something going on. There's constantly something some threat, and the story is also kept interesting throughout. It it manages to keep it fresh throughout. It is a very short game, but still, I was never bored, and I was never, you know, it never felt repetitive. But the game is quite short. I completed it in two days, and, you know, the first of those days I helped my brother move out move out of his apartment and the second day I bought stuff to move into that yeah I'm moving so yeah I could have completed this in a day if 
you know, if I had just sat down and played throughout the day, it wouldn't have taken me all day either. So yeah. And there isn't a lot of replayability, sadly. There's only three difficulty settings. There's a co-op mode, but I'm not sure that works for the PC. It told me to put in an Xbox controller, so I have a feeling it's a port of the console version. I could be wrong. In either way, I don't have a controller, so... I tried the multiplayer, but it kept bitching about the Windows Live logon. I've had problems with that before, so I gave up. But the rules do sound really, really cool. Basically, bank robbery, eight people total, and you have to decide if you want to stay on the side of the rest of them or become a traitor. To become a traitor, you have to kill one of your own. But and, and this will mean that you don't have to share the loot with anyone else because they're not going to, you know, a traitor, you're going to get away. But if someone kills a traitor, they're going to get a bonus. So you don't want to become a traitor too early or at the wrong time because you'll be killed. If you are killed, you'll apparently respawn as a guard trying to keep the burglars out, trying to pre you know, prevent them from getting away. And obviously, anyone who's still you know, one of the original eight members, have to try to get away from the bank with as much of a loot as they can. And the guards killing killing the person who became a traitor by killing you gets you a special bonus, and you get a finder's fee as a guard by killing, you know, the mercenaries that have, or bank robbers that have got a lot of loot, you know. The... It's a bit streamlined, it's quite streamlined, and usually I do complain about that because it can really harm a game, but here they actually get away with it. The risk is not gone, not at all. It is still a very, you know, you're constantly at risk. And it does not take away all control of, you know, what's going on. I mean, it is a linear game, but quite a few are. You know, you're still aiming, you're still choosing what weapons to go with, and I did realize you can actually run out of ammo. Basically, ammo, when you're almost out, your character will automatically yell, I'm out of ammo, and if someone else has, and usually they will, unless you've already spent it all, someone else on your team will yell, I've got it, and there'll be, you know, an icon of a bullet over their head, and, you know, you run over to them, pick up the ammo automatically. You know, you don't have to press use or anything. It's very, very smooth. And, you know, there's no reload key, he just reloads automatically when, you know, either when you switch to that weapon, if it doesn't have a full clip in it, or just when you run out of bullets. The there's also no counter for how many bullets are left in the clip, and the counter for how many bullets you have left will only appear when you switch weapons or when you run out. Or when you are running out, you know, when you're on your last clip. The You can only count carry one, let's say, rifle and one sidearm, and two types of grenades. I can confirm that there are pineapple grenades and smoke grenades. I'm not entirely sure if there are any others. I think at some point they mentioned, like, incendiary grenades, fire something, but I don't know. I The only grenades I ever got around to using were the pineapple ones and the smoke ones. The, the arsenal can consist of such things as a you know, just a regular pistol, a magnum, a silenced pistol, sniper rifle, an assault rifle, a, a machine gun, a shotgun, submachine gun, and a, 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 what's it called, rocket propelled grenade, you know, bazooka, which will actually only fire one, and then you have to pick up an, a new you know, you don't reload those, you just toss it away and pick up a new one if you want to keep using that. And yes, you do shoot down helicopters in this on occasion. And a grenade launcher. The 
you you can swap weapons with anyone on your team. Just walk up to them, and just, you know, open your inventory. You know, double click on either up or down, and it'll be either the main weapon or the sidearm, respectively. The level designs are quite nice. I mean, it is linear, but you never really feel like, oh, come on, I wanted to walk that way, because no, that way, there are, you know, that's where the police are coming from, or that's just not the way to go, you know, considering your objectives. You can s kill up close uh, easily with no real, you know, there's no fighting to it. It's not, there's no fighting system to it. You basically just get close and, you know, click use. And, yeah, it'll, you'll kill them. You have this little blade that protrudes from the fingers. The repelling is a bit out of your control, at least sometimes. It's slightly awkward because you're never entirely sure if you will get control of it or not. I'm not sure they could really have done anything else with it, though, but... The controls are intuitive. You can sit right down and start playing this. You... There's a key to swap what grenade you're using. There are a couple of keys for, you know, you can use the mouse wheel, or you can use a key on the keyboard to swap which weapon you're using. And then there's a use key, the walking keys, the three order keys, which are follow me, attack, target, and defend this the position I'm pointing towards, just like in Freedom Fighters. And there's a map key, which will... It's not really a map per se, but it shows you how far away on the map, sort of, the objective is, and it centers your view towards that. Of course, sometimes this does mean that you're, you know, you don't always get to go straight there, sometimes you have to go around a bit, but, yeah. The... You can also climb things, and you use the use key to, yeah, to climb things. There's an excellent cover system. Basically, you just move towards something and then let go, I think. I did sometimes have trouble with, you know, entering it, exiting it, but... Well, not exiting it, but... Basically, it's easier done than said, actually. You basically just do it automatically when you need it, you know. And it is really, really helpful because you can stay in cover and actually fire in a quite wide angle. You don't... you're not limited to what's in front of you, so they can't come... you know, if you're here, they can't come from the side here, because you can aim that way also, without leaving the cover. And you can blind fire from cover, which you do by just firing, and you can aim in cover. When you aim, you will, of course, you know, get briefly out from cover, you can be shot, but it, you know, it reacts instantaneously. So, just choose the right time, fire a few bullets, make them count, then get back in cover, you know, just by letting go of right mouse button. You can press right mouse button at any time to improve your aim, and basically, excuse me, you can shoot and aim without it, but it improves your aim. So it's also, for example, when you have the sniper, that's, you know, how you use the scope. And, yeah, just in general. And that more or less covers it. The, the sound is really good. The voice acting is quite good, actually. I don't think there was a single character who didn't sound right, or who was acted poorly or something. The characters all have personalities and backstories, although you do not remember all of them. The drama is quite effective, though. You do get the sense that this is a world where no one can trust anyone else. You know, there's constant complaining back and forth. And when I say that, when you hear that, you instantly think, oh, you know, you have to, you know, tolerate them constantly. No, it's really not like that. It just makes you feel like any moment now someone on your team 
is going to turn on you, you know, he's going to pull a bullet, put a bullet in your head, and you can't do without him, you know, you can't betray him, because you need each other, there's not enough. You, you cannot get past all of these enemy soldiers or cops, SWAT team members, without each other. You need each other, but it is a very shaky alliance, as I believe the multiplayer mode is called. The the music is excellent, very gloomy, very atmospheric, by Jesper Kuhl, as usual, you know, IO Interactive, home of awesome games, and unique-ish concepts, and great music for them. The, the graphics are fantastic. It really does feel like, you know, they... They really go for it with filters and all the stuff. I mean, the very first thing is you're waking up from this prison transport being knocked over, and there's you know the, the, this vague haze. You know, you can kind of make out what's going on. You know, your focus is going in and out. You know, there's smoke. Smoke properly does cover. You know, and Fire looks really good, lighting is fantastic, and just all the various effects, water, the horizon, everything looks amazing. That pretty much covers it, I think. So, yeah. I would definitely recommend this to anyone who enjoyed Freedom Fighters and in general fans of tactical shooters. And anyone who just really loves the concept also definitely. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but this is about as close as you're ever going to get, at least so far, to a game version of Heat. And if you watch that movie and you like video games, you are thinking, I want to play that. You know, there are several situations that they got straight from heat. The the bank robbery situation and getting away... One particular place of getting away is right out of heat, you know. I mean, they are also making a movie version of this. I suppose I could see that. It is a great plot. You really have to wonder why this plot and this concept wasn't done sooner, you know, but, yeah, I went right to leave it to them, you know, Hitman, Freedom Fighters, I mean, I haven't watched Red Dawn, I know, shame on me, but everyone who has tells me that that movie needed a game, you know, so, yeah, anyway, that was my review of Kane and Lynch, Dead Men, I hope you enjoyed it, I'll see you next time.